Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be covering what are multilingual issues in syntactic analysis. Guys, I have uploaded a complete NLP subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Guys, we also call syntactic analysis as semantic analysis or syntax analysis or parsing. So, syntactic analysis means checking the structure of a sentence according to grammar rules. Yes, whenever we give any sentence like I am Nagendra, syntactic analysis will identify meaning of the sentence based on grammar rules like what is noun, verb, adverb, adjective, etc. Based on these grammar rules, syntactic analysis will identify meaning of the sentence. That is nothing but structure of the sentence. So, with the help of syntactic analysis, computer can understand natural language. That is nothing but computer can understand human language like English. But when we deal with multiple languages like Telugu, Hindi, etc., syntactic analysis cannot understand multiple languages like Telugu, Hindi. The syntactic analysis can understand only English language. So, English language has different grammar rules and other languages has different grammar rules. So, when we deal with multiple languages, syntactic analysis becomes very difficult. So, each language has its own grammar rules, word order and style of writing. So, parts are trained in only one language, cannot understand other languages. These are multilingual issues in syntactic analysis. Now, the first one is word order difference. Because different languages follow different word orders. Like, for example, if you consider English, the English will follow word order like it first will read subject, then verb, then object. For example, Ram eats mango. So, it first Ram, which is subject, eats, which is verb, and mango, which is object. So, this is the order in English. And whereas, if you consider order in Telugu or Hindi, it first will read subject, then object, then verb. For example, Ramudu Mamedi Chinnadu. So, Ramudu, which is subject, Mamedi, which is object, and Tinnadu, which is verb. So, different languages follow different word orders. So, parts are designed for English. Cannot understand Telugu or Hindi because each language follow different word orders. And second one is ambiguity in multiple languages. Guys, one word can have multiple meanings. For example, there is sentence, I saw the man with the telescope. The sentence has two meanings. One is, did I use telescope to see the man or man have the telescope, which is correct, we don't know. So, based on context, parts are need to decide which is correct. And if you consider Telugu sentence, even in Telugu sentence, same type of ambiguity appears. For example, there is sentence, Enu duradarshini to manshini chusanu. So, even in Telugu language, same type of ambiguity appears. So, parts are designed for English language, can handle only English language ambiguities, but it cannot handle Telugu or other language ambiguities. And third one is morphological richness. Some languages are morphologically rich, like Telugu, Hindi, Tamil. A single root word can appear in many forms of inflection. For example, if you consider Telugu language, in Telugu language, there is example, Vellu. Vellu means go. So, this is root word. This Vellu is repeated in various forms, like, so in Veltanu, Vellanu, and Veltunanu, there is root word Vellu. So, we call this Telugu as morphologically rich language. But whereas, if you consider English language, English language is not morphologically rich because, for example, if you consider what go, goes and went. Here go is not repeated here. So, English is not morphologically rich. Yes, for example, there is word talk, talked, talking. Here root word is repeated. But whereas if you consider some words like go, goes, went, here root word is not repeated. So, in the situations, parser cannot split root plus suffixes in order to understand meaning of the sentence. So, English language is not morphologically rich when compared to other languages. And fourth one is free word order languages. Here some languages allow words to move freely without changing meaning. For example, if you consider Telugu language, in Telugu language, we can move words freely. For example, at first I will write Ramudu Mamedi Tinnadu and next I will write Mamedi Ramudu Tinnadu. So, both sentences have same meaning. In English language, we cannot change word order. In Telugu language, we can easily change word order because Telugu grammar do not follow much grammar rules when compared to English. But whereas English language, in English language, whenever we change word order, we may get grammatical mistakes. So, English language cannot only depend on word order, but also English language need to check prefixes and suffixes in order to know subject, object and tense. And fifth one is lack of resources. Guys, in English language, there are so many data sets. Data set is nothing but this a file that contains various kinds of sentences and as well as their grammar rules. For example, if you consider tree bank, tree bank is one of the module in Python. So, whenever we give tree bank to parser, as this tree bank contains various kinds of sentences and as well as grammar rules. So, whenever you give any complicated sentence to this parser, so by using tree bank, parser will understand various sentences and grammar rules 
So whenever you give any complicated sentence, parser will give us correct output. So English language contains various kinds of data sets and resources. Whereas if you consider other languages like Telugu, Canada, etc., this language contains only less data sets when compared to English. So without data sets, we cannot train our parser properly. And sixth one is script and encoding issues. Guys, different languages use different kinds of scripts. Scripts contain alphabets. And computer will store all the scripts in different encoding formats like RC format, like Unicode format, UTF format, etc. So, if particular parser is designed only for English language, you can understand only English language. It cannot understand Telugu or Hindi languages because alphabets are different in different languages. And eighth one is code mixing or code switching. Thus, in India, most of the people will use English language along with regional languages. Yes, for example, I'll send WhatsApp message to my friend like Hi, Bhavunava. So, Hi is English language and Bhavunava is Telugu. So, in India, in same sentence, people will mix English language with local languages. But if parser is trained only in English language, parser can understand only English grammar. And if parser is trained only in Telugu language, parser can understand only Telugu grammar. So, whenever we mix two languages in single sentence, parser need to decide which language grammar it need to apply for each word. So, whenever we mix multiple languages, parser get confused. Because of all these issues, parser cannot handle multiple languages. Because of different languages follow different word orders. Handling ambiguity in multiple languages are different. Some languages are morphologically rich and whereas some other languages are not morphologically rich. Some languages have free word order and whereas some other languages don't have free word order. Some languages don't have much resources. And scripting and encoding is different in different languages and because of using code switching, Parser cannot handle multiple languages. So, in order to overcome this problem, we have to use language specific parsers that are nothing but parsers that can handle multiple languages. We need to train parser not only with English language but also with various other languages by giving various kinds of futures and various kinds of resources. We have to train our parser with different languages so that parser can understand different languages.